Hey guys, hi, hello, welcome all of you. Let me see how many people have joined. Just my guys, I'll just go to the home page. All right. All right, fellas, we'll be starting soon, real soon. Oops. Sorry for this. Yeah. Should keep the uh, screen shared. I think till yesterday, uh, we have worked on uh, almost all the formulas, right? And I think today we were supposed to look at few formulas which are more towards uh, index and match, right? So we'll start with that. So we'll start with understanding what are index functions, what are match functions, how can index and match functions in conjunction can be used properly. Then we'll you, uh, move on to, you know, uh, uh, we'll move on to, uh, you know, uh, combining sheets or how can we have multiple data, our data for multiple sheets into one particular tab over there. This is something that we'll study today. We'll also have a glimpse of data modeling. And then we'll also have a glimpse of how can we basically automate the data collection storage, basic data collection process. For example, if I have an employee or a, if I have a team member, there are three to four team members reporting to me and they're entering things in Excel, how can I ac actually take that data into one consolidated sheet using something called as macros, okay? So we'll have a glimpse on the macros today as well, right? So let's begin. I think this is good enough for us. Almost two and a half minutes are there and it's good, good enough time for us to begin. So let me start with this. I think we'll start with, uh, let me write the agenda very sh in the very short form over here. We'll start with looking at index function. We'll start with looking at match function. We'll start, uh, we'll move on to the index plus match function. What, uh, what these two functions can do to us. And uh, once we're done with this, I think uh, uh, we'll move on to data consolidation because as today we are going to move towards, you know, data management, more towards data management, advanced techniques of data management, we should do that. So we'll move on to data consolidation. Once we move on to data consolidation, we'll move on to data merging from, or I should not say merging, I think uh, appending is a better word over here. So data appending using uh, various sources from various tabs into one tab. And then we'll also see data modeling in Excel. How can we model data? What exactly is the model data modeling and uh, how can we perform it in Excel? This is something that uh, let's keep the agenda till now. And if time permits, we'll move on to financial functions, which I mentioned in the last class that there are certain functions which are extremely important uh, for everybody should know as a common person you should know those functions very very important right so even if you don't use excel from here in your entire life later on you should know something called as present value pmp and various other things over here i'm so sorry for that i think i just screen got yeah i think i'm, I'm very clearly audible and we can uh, start the session those who are currently attending the session can put a comment on the chat box stating that am i currently very clearly audible or is there a distraction in the voice you're able to listen to me clearly if not i probably will be will be checking it myself yes perhaps i take it of the fan all right excellent thank you All right, cool. So let me start with Excel. Let me start with the index function. Let me open up the Excel, which I wanted to show you guys. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. All right. So I, oh, I haven't put it on the screen yet. So I'll just put it on the screen. This is the Excel and this is what we have typed, right? This is what we are going to do in today's session, right? So uh, the point is, these are the seven to eight things. We'll cover it up. As we can see, index followed by match, followed by index plus match. We'll move on to data consolidation, data appending, data modeling, and financial functions. I think this much should be a good enough agenda for us to carry out today. So let me start with the sheet over here. Now, let, let me uh, start with index over here. So I've actually moved on to a different sheet, different data actually today. 
which is the data of something called as sample superstore and this is the orders data nothing particular about the data there's hardly uh, there's nothing much to worry about that is we can easily understand the data there's something called as row id and i think this kind of data which is row id probably should not be taken into account over here so i'll just delete it because it's not giving me any information it's just the row id and the, as we can see the row id every row id is just one lesser than the row number so it's not giving me any information so i wouldn't be very keen to keep this data into my data modeling or it, i'm not very keen to uh, keep this data so i'll just delete that i took the order id order date ship date ship mode customer id customer name as you can see it on the screen wait 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 i think the way we have been doing it is we first increase the resolution of the settings so that we see the excel file properly i hope uh, it's better now right so guys please feel free to put comments on the chat box in case you know the font is not visible or the sheet of sheets are too small or it's not readable we'll definitely do something about it right as of now we can i hope we can easily read it that order id order date ship date ship mode customer id customer name segment this is what we have over here right so we can see that this is my order level data till order id order date ship date and ship mode as well then this is customer level data that is customer id customer name and what is the segment the customer belongs to then when it comes to city state postal code region we are talking about the location level data and when it comes to product id category subcategory and product name we are looking at product level data right so take it like this that this is what i have done this is the order id this is the product which is sold this is to whom i have sold which is the customer this is the not this is nothing but the location where have i sold where is the sales taken place and this is nothing but the product id that is what has been sold okay this is sales quantity discount and profit which are four major units over here now let me move on to what exactly the an, an index function does okay okay i was doing few things let me do one thing let me just clear everything that we have done over here i think all right so 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 okay cool right so now i think let's start first understand what is index function what index function does so i'll go for index now if i look at index function as as it says give me a reference or an array give me a row number give me a column number right so index function over here it says that give me an array array is nothing but a collection let's it's a part of the table let's collect uh, you know take it as a part of the table okay uh, before i move on to that i think i need to uh, discuss few more things over here one is of course once you enter data into excel right you haven't actually made that data into a table for example if i just copy this right and put it on another tab over here and if i just you know uh, right click over here and paste as values the values will be pasted like this but this really isn't a table it's not a table right and that is why what we need to do is to convert this into a tabular format over here for example if i just look at it right this is what we do this is what we do to convert a particular data into a tabular format what we do is we select that entire data in fact uh, we can just copy it i can just get back to the same kind of setup we can just sorry control z i'll just paste it over here with you no know, paste values it looks something like this now if i have to convert this data into a table what i need to do is to go to either go for control t something like this will pop up or go for insert option and go for table right insert and table now this converts the entire selected data into a tabular format there are certain advantages of this thing right so we can easily use uh, you know there are certain when it comes to applying formulas and referencing columns or referencing column name this gives us advantage defining the table name always gives us certain advantages okay now if i click on okay and i'll i'll just click over here that my table has headers it simply means that the first row is nothing but the header of that particular column okay if i click on okay the entire table becomes the entire data becomes a table and now we can just 
click over here and we can select the format in which we want the we want to see the table there are plenty of formats available you can play, play around it and suit yourself basically right now we are going to delete this because we've already made this this is just a duplicate of what we've already done okay so this is that particular table which we have right now once we have the table name referencing certain cells referencing certain rows and columns becomes slightly easy see for example we have seen in vlookup that you know in in vlookup what happens is we need to give the column name or other i should say column number that i'm referring to in the vlookup function and if let's say there is an excel sheet which contains let's say 54 columns then i actually have to count it out right which column are we talking about? for example if it is ac then we have to literally count it a26 then a b and c it means that this 29th column i have to input hard code the number 29 over there now with tabular properties i think this can be avoided okay so coming back coming back to the index part i'll go for this so let's go for index function is equal to index okay let me do this quickly and i'll go for uh the array over here i'll take the entire array okay i'll take the entire array and say that okay this is the array i'm taking let me take you back to where the index formula is written over here right so it is basically taking table to all and in fact in fact before we do this we can actually go for you know control a or I should say, you know, once we define the table, we will actually name the table as well, right? So once we do control T and this is already a table, we can insert this already a table. We can actually give it a name. We can give this particular table a name. Or let's say this is my orders data, right? And I'm not sure there's a space allowed over here. So I'll just not take the risk give a underscore over there simple as that right now this is my order data table over here advantage of this again is simple once we start using index function right z equal to index right and the array that i'm using is now this one i hope that name didn't get noticed nevertheless we'll move to that later so it is basically table to all we have selected table to all the entire data already got selected now we can see that as i've made this a table that thing which we which used to come that a2 dollar colon to let's say s3501 uh, that range is not coming up it says that i've taken the entire table simple as that that's the meaning over here row number and column number now if i put a row number over here it's going to give me a certain value for example if i just take three and if i go for let's say nine it says that start with the third row and go to the ninth column third row and the ninth column and what third row ninth column whatever value comes up just reflect that value now this is going to reflect that particular value the value seems to be the ninth column seems to be city and the third one seems to be kentucky so it's basically reflecting 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 this particular case over here as we can see third row starting from state of course first one includes the header as well okay uh, in order to i think this is a big formula over here and i think what we need to do is to majorly let me delete a few of the columns over here otherwise it might you know yeah what i'll do is i'll take a subset of this data so that we can easily understand the uh understand uh, these two functions quickly and then we can see how as a data management level how can we use this okay so i'll take this up and as a rough stuff uh, what i've done is i've actually taken this over here and in fact it at times it happens that you need to you know change the width of the column as per the the width of the data which is entered over there so you can just go to home you can just go to format over here and you can go for auto fit with column width that happens automatically now let's say uh, i am using index just let's quickly look at index function so i'll go for index index and i say that okay in this particular array or rather a collection of rows and columns now this time it's not giving me table two because this is not a defined table right now okay but if i define this table if i define this this as a table over here right if I take this, that if I define this as control T, I'm sorry, control T. And if I define this table, okay, we can actually define this table as my demo table. 
okay and if i put enter i think this will come up right oops sorry wrong place i'll use this and I'm, this is the table name over here i was entering at the wrong place <laughs> i'm so sorry for that so this is demo and if i insert this the name already exists because i've already given demo to a certain cell so i'll go for demo underscore table right and if i press enter the table is now called demo table anyways objective was not that objective was to use the index function now if i go for index function here if i go for index function index function says that give me an array this is my array over here now we can see still okay now it's coming demo table all you have taken the entire demo table over here we can actually hard code it as well and then i say that give me a row number for example i want to let's say reflect this bh uh 11 uh, 11710 okay or probably want to reflect the customer name of a certain order id okay now let's say i go for i want to understand uh, this particular order id which is in one two three four five six seven eight and ninth row so i'll go for the row number that is nine and a column number which is my one two three four five six which is six now, if i enter and close over here i'm getting the name of the customer over here i'm getting the name of the customer using index so index says in the entire array go certain number of rows certain number of columns and it'll give you that certain reference number now what's fun about uh index is that let's say i don't give a row number what happens let's see if i take if i remove this and if i go for this it's going to give me the first one right it's going to take the first one over here isn't it it's going to give me clear glute that is taken the first row over here now if i let's say go for if i put up a comma and if i go for a row number right and let's say i go for nine and if i don't go for a column name right i don't go for column name i just enter and see what happens over here is that it's going to give me an error saying that post comma there is nothing which is entered over here i delete this enter again there is a reference error so i need to give a column name over here so if i go for let's say five and go for it it gives me the ninth row and the fifth column which is my customer id all right so this is what is happening this is what is index function so this is index function right oops i think i just added to the table so i'll just do one thing that's the advantage of table guys okay what we just saw was an advantage of the table i'll just go for this hello that's the problem okay so let me delete this from here let me insert something from here and i'll say this is my index function i've used it see uh, advantage of this is for example if i go for another value added over here let's say i want to add another value let me copy one of the values over here and let me put it up here just below the table it automatically takes that as a part of the table now i can finish the entire entire exercise and then it automatically is taken inside the table that extra data for example if i take the data over here for example if i let's say copy this particular date and put it up over here now this is already automatically taken into the data as you can see the data borders are increasing right as of now what i can do is i can just do control z control z control z z and z so i moved on to the original format now match what match does what does match do what match does is that let's use the function okay if i use the function match it says that give me a lookup value what is the value that you're looking up to now you can hard code the value or you can refer to a certain cell for example i refer to this particular cell right now ac this the first row of the ac column i'm referring to this match this and say that where do I, where do you want me to match this i'll say that uh match this over here in the order id okay and then it says that okay what is the match type the third one is a match type what do you mean by a match type now match type simply says that is it an exact match or is it less than or equal to match as of now we can move on to zero over here which represents oops comma and then zero which uh, represents the exact match that is whatever quantity i write over here it has to be an exact match right now it shows an error because i haven't mentioned anything over here but if i let's say copy one of the cells here and put it up it's going to match it up 
what is it going? It's going to find out the row. Where is that particular number coming to? Understand what you've done. We have used match function. This is what am I matching? AC1, whatever entry I put in AC1, which is this thing. Okay. Now, where do I match? This is where I match in the orders ID, in the demo table, in the orders ID column. And zero means exact match over here. Now, once I press enter and execute this, it's going to give me from top is going to start counting. Where is this particular con com quantity coming from? For example, if I just look at it, I think this 812 belongs to over here, which is the seventh row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It provides me the first row it encountered while moving down in which that particular element was found. Let me slightly ease it up a bit. Let's say I want to go for customer ID. For example, I want to find out a certain customer ID over here, right? So I can go for, okay, customer ID is present in Y. So I can say, okay, in demo table, instead of order ID, now here's the advantage of defining a table. What I can do is I can go for double quotes and inside the double quote, I actually put the name of the column that is customer ID. It still reads it up. Okay. In the AC one, right now it's saying value because the value is not identified over here. But let's say I want to identify this particular value. And if I put it up over here, okay. 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 Customer ID. This is the one. Okay. With space, perhaps it's not working. It's okay. No worries. So I'll just take it, retrace it back. Right. And in this, got it. I think there was no array defined. That is why there was a problem over here. Anyways, nevertheless, if I just click on this, it's basically going to select that particular column. If I go for zero, I think zero is not a good, or zero is the exact match. If I enter, whoa. Let me select the entire column only. Let's not play the game, right? So I'll just select the entire column, okay? And press enter. It's going to basically give me where is this particular quantity BH11710 is going to be reflected, okay? So this is what is happening over here. This is what index and match function can do. Match function can give me a certain number. Match function can give me a certain number. And that certain number is nothing but the row number of this quantity which you are trying to match. So match function can be used as a mode in which I can input these two numbers in index. I can input these two numbers in index over here. For example, if I just delete this. So what I'm really trying to say is that in index, index function demands for two things. One is what is the row number? The other, what is the column number? Now, instead of hard coding the row number and the column number, what we can do is we can actually use match function over here. And using the match function, the match function is going to give me that number and column which you're referring to. And we can actually make this kind of a mini dashboard and we can actually make this a bit dynamic. For example, let's say I want to, uh, this is, now let me take slightly better data over here. Okay, I, I don't like this because this is all textual data. And let me now move on to the original data. Okay, let me now move on to the original data because now, as I'll not be using any numbers, I don't mind using the original data. Let me delete these columns over here. Namu Nishan hata deta so that the, even the formatting doesn't remain. Now, I want to go for, let's say I want to go for four things. One is sales. Then we can go for profit. We can go for quantity sold. Okay. And then we can go for discount offered. I want to understand the four things. And I want to understand the four things using match index, okay, for uh, this thing. For, let's say, I want to do it for, or let me start with sales only. Let me actually go for sales only. I think this is slightly better, right? Let's say I want to understand uh, region-wise sales. So I'll just put in region and I'll just put in sales over here. Okay, so I just put in region, I just put in sales over here. Now, what I'll do is I'll ask, you know, uh, what is the region that you're looking at? Okay, and now what I can do is let me use this. Let me use this region. 
and let me go for um, parameter. I'll go for parameter. So what parameter am I looking for and what is the region that I'm looking for? Okay. So uh, don't worry. I'll, I'll just come to this, what we are trying to do. So in this particular uh, merged format, I if I just merge this up and apply a formula, and the formula is index, right? Index and array is the entire array, the entire table we are looking at. If you look at the entire table, this is the entire table, right? And comma, I get back to where the array is. And now instead of giving a row number, I'll say that match a certain thing. For example, I'll go for match. And what is the Likov value? I'll just put up this look for whatever I put under region. So I'll say that look for V2. I put up a comma over here. And then what is the column type that you're looking at? Right. What is the column or other? What is the array in which you want this to be looking at? Now, I'll have to go for the array of region over here. I want you to look at this particular part where the array of region is there, where which is this one. So I'll take this and I think I'll, I'll just select the entire array over here. Selected the entire column. Right. So K to K, this is what I want to do. And I want it to be an exact match. Okay. I want it to be an exact match. So I'll just put zero there. With exact match, it would mean that if the spelling has to be same. So if instead of West, if I put in W, it'll not take it. If I put it W E E S T, by mistake, there is a spell error over there, it'll still not take it. Okay. So that's the entire idea about you know going for an exact match or an approximate match. We can go for a less than match. We can go for a greater than match over here as well. Right. So let's see. Now, this is my match. Now, this entire function. Oops. I think it has taken me as closure of the function. But no worries. I haven't really closed the function. I'll just continue with this. So this is this match function is basically letting me decide the row number in which I want to land up to. Okay. This is the row number that I'm looking at. Okay. Now, uh, Fair enough, fair enough. And I think this is the non-summarized data. So this will give me a bit of problem, but no worries. I'll put up comma and I'll use another match function over here. And the match function says that this time I'll go for a match function. And the match function says, okay, in this match function, go for, look for whatever I input over here. And the array that I want to want you to look at it is a very simple one, this one. So I'll ask for either sales quantity, discount or profit because these two are the only numerical variables I'm concerned about. I don't think there's no, uh, any other numerical variable which I'll be worried about. So I'll just take this, right? And I'll say that go for an exact match over here as well, right? So this is my match, right? So this is the case over here, right? So this is my index. This is my match one. And this is my match V2, K to K, right? And then this is the match over here for W2 table header sales to profit. And I'll say that go for a match over here as well. Now, I'm not exactly getting anything over here. Reason for this is I haven't put anything in region and sales. For example, if I put best over here in region, okay? And in parameter, let's say I go for sales. What comes up over here? Oops, there's a problem. What is the problem? It's not exactly giving me sales to profit. Very interesting. It's giving me W2. Interesting, interesting, interesting. One, two, three, four. It's giving me the fourth number over here. What would happen? Let me check this out. So you can go for two match functions over here. Let's see. Let's rectify this. Let me go for the second match function. So the first match, I'll just go for match. And if I go for the lookup value, I, this is the value I'm looking up to. And I'm saying that where's the lookup array. This is the lookup array that I want to look up to. Yep. And then if I go for zero, I want to go for an exact match over here. This. Closes the parenthesis for match. Match is done. 
and then I go for the index function that is also done right and it's reflecting the wrong value which is very very interesting let me go for a number let me select the case over here let me see which value is it reflecting okay so it's basically reflecting the fourth row over here row while it's moving fine but somehow it's not moving the it's not moving in this particular part over here what is the mistake we are doing okay let me try out both the match functions separately. Let me take this match function and put it up. I think this something like this. If it comes up, I think we need to look at the components of the function. Okay. So right now, let me keep it as it is. Let me keep the reference going. If I go for match, it is giving me one because, of course, sales is there. Yes. So this match function is working because in this particular array, sales comes out to be the first so this match is working let me go for the other match which we are using over here which is match v2k2k use this is equal to v and now i see that it's fourth as well right so it's coming out to be the fourth one although this is a non summarized data so that is why i think you know working on this probably will be a bit of problem because region south west west comes out the four so both the match functions are separately working so let me rewrite the index function again with the hope that perhaps this time it will work so i'll go for index and then i'll go for array and the array i'm looking forward to is First, the entire okay, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. You know what, guys? Let's do one thing let's summarize the data first. Let's have the summary of the data, and then based on that summary, I think it'll be better for us to display a few things. For example, if I just take this and apply insert a pivot over here, right? And in the new workbook, let me insert the pivot, let me get the summarized data over here. And by summarized data, I say that let's get you know, uh, in the columns, let's get those four quantities, which are sales, uh, quantity sold, oops, sales, quantity hmm. sold, right, and then we uh, discount offered and the profit that we're looking at, right. So these are the four quantities we're looking at. In rows, we can probably move on to uh, a certain, let's say, region. Let's say I take it as a region over here. So in this region, I want to do it. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to actually, uh, with this right now, this comes out to be only region wise stuff. We can remove the region. We can take it to category level stuff. So I think that, or we can put up the subcategory over here and we can have the subcategory types part over here. Right. So let me do one thing. Let me take up subcategory and let me copy this particular table right now till here. Okay. And let me put it in orders. Or let me put it up over here. Right. I'll just paste it. Right. And I'll just paste it with only the values. And I'll remove the pivot table. Right, so let's do this. Borders, let's align it a bit. Okay, now what uh, the mistake that, uh, you know, kind of mistake that we're doing or other in the excitement of showing you the impact of index and match, what we forgot was basically West, a lot of West were there, a lot of sales were there. And sales were chalo ek hi tha, but I think a lot of West entries were there in that case. Okay. So I think the same thing can be done over here. I think here, what I'll do is I'll just copy this, Control C, and let me take it to sheet four, which is my, well, I could say summarized data. Right, this is my summarized data. Let me put it up over here, region and parameter, and let's apply the same thing 
here now. Let me merge up the cells. And I can say that let's apply index and match. So I'll go for index. And the array I'm looking forward to is this particular array. Let me fix it up. Sorry. Function F4. And I'll go for the row number. Instead of row number, I'll use a match function. I'll go for a match function. And I'll match over here in this particular array. I selected the array in which I need to apply the match. Okay. And then I, I want it to match this particular part over here. Right. This, whatever I enter over here, match this up. Oops. I think I've given the array first. Right. So I'll have to first go for the lookup value, which is this one. And then this is the array followed by exact match. Okay. Now this is my match function done for row. This is going to reflect the number of rows. And if I go for another match function, the next match function can be over here in this and say sum of sales, sum of quantity, sum of discounted, sum of profit, which obviously I'll change in a moment. Right. So this is the match. Again, the same mistake. We should first look at what to match. This is the lookup value. And now we can go for sum of discount over here, sum of quantity, the four things that we're looking at. So I'm saying that whatever is there in H4, measure it up or find it over here and whatever comes up right i go for an exact match this is how the column number is defined now if i enter nothing comes up right now because i haven't entered anything first of all i'll move on to this as subcategory okay sorry i'll just move the subcategory right and i'll just put it up over here and here it should be sales it should be quantity it should be discount it should be profit okay so i think it will work now right so this is what what we're trying to do is based on what i enter over here a number should come up right so let's see if i go for a subcategory let's say art okay and the parameter is let's say sales Let's say this works or not. So now, still getting the same thing over here. It's giving me the row number here. Okay, 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 okay. Accessories, appliances, and art. It's just giving me the third row. It's not reaching out to the columns over here. Okay, column number is the first one, first column. All right, probably it's not working here. Interestingly, both the match uh, functions are working well separately. So this is giving me four, row number four, and this is giving me This is giving me row number, column number one. Oops, why is it giving me column number one, which is over here? Okay, so it's giving me row number one and column number one. Ideally, it should give me column number two. That's a problem over here. So what I need to do here is to, okay, so I'll have to go for, see, the, that's the point. In this entire cases, I can go for, there are two errors over here, right? So I think this happens with a lot of people. Once you start writing formulas, you get error. One error that I made is I've selected this B3 to E3 over here. Now, instead of that, if I go for, let's say, A3 to B3, the problem gets solved because now it goes from A3, right, from here till here in the entire array. It says that sales is the second column, and now it's reflecting me the art and sales of art over here. Can you just see? So I think here what happened was in A3, what we're doing was that we, when I selected B3 over here, it was counting this an array from here. And once I enter sales over here, sales being the first element of this entire array, it was giving the first column number in this particular array, which I have been selected from subcategory. Okay. So I can do either, I can change it from B3 to E3, or I can say that this plus one would also work. Right. So this is something that we can go ahead with. Right. So this is how index and match function works. Match function is basically used to reflect the column and rows over here, 
okay column and rows whichever column and rows do we want now here i can change it up for example if i can go for chairs if i go for chairs i can go for chairs sales and if i go for let's say profit i'll go for chairs profit so this is reflecting chairs profit and we can now actually format this a bit as well right so i can just increase this and make it bold yeah plenty of things can be done as far as formatting is concerned so let's not waste our time over there we can just all borders alignment that's it yeah and this is this is something that we can highlight right this is what we're doing okay now the right now it's giving me profit for profit for chairs it's giving me profit for chairs now how can we make it dynamic for example is it a possibility that this entire data that we have over here in this entire data can we do something like that i can select whichever subcategory and whichever parameter that i want right for example can i say instead of hard coding and writing chairs over there can i make it change to some other part for example i want to just change it to accessories i don't want to write the entire word accessory over there that can be done by including the data validation now i can go for formatting in order to include data validation we can go to format i'm so sorry not here in the home page right we can go towards nah, 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 nah. all right so let me see this if i go to data and go for this particular part data validation at times it does take a lot of time now i can go for a list okay i can go for a list and i say that what is the source i click on this and select the source this is the entire source right i want this to come up over here so i'll just click on this and click on okay now we can select any one of these subcategories from here. for example if i select appliances it's going to give me the profit of appliances if i select for bookcases it's going to give me the profit of bookcases we can go for labels right in fact it can we can actually want doing some conditional formatting over there as well but once i click on this the data validation on that cell gets activated i can go for supplies i can go for labels the same thing can be done for parameter we can actually instead of hard coding profit over here what we can do is we can just click on this go to data validation go to a list okay and select a source and the source this time has to be from this sales quantity discount and profit right and i click on this and now this entire thing comes up over here so now i've made both parameter and subcategory as dynamic the reason for that or rather the advantage of that would be i can just click any one of them so i can want to see quantity sold for machines i can do that i can go for phones i can go for profit in phones all that stuff can be done all right so this is what match index can do for us guys all right this is how match index works in excel all right at times it does happen that you tend to have some problem with the versions of excel so just be patient things will fall into place okay now uh we can remove this i think this is our crux of data right so subcategory parameter phones and profit this is what we are having cool now all right right so this is what match index can do we are done taken care of i think i we have taken care of match index these three are done over here so i one then once we move towards data consolidation and then data appending let's move on to that as well right i'll just move on to the summarized data over here let me do one thing here let's say this is the data that i have now if i want to add more data for example here the data is coming up okay a lot of data is coming up over here and i think we can see that the number of columns here are plenty right so we can just click on this yep 
almost 19 columns over here. Right. Now, let me take a simple example. I'll just open up another sheet over here. This, let me call this agenda. Okay. I'll open up another sheet. And in this sheet, let me, uh, you know, uh, take up a demo data. For example, let's say I want to create this database. Let's say there is a situation in which, you know, uh, this is the database which I want to create. And let's say something like this. And I'll move to the sheet. I'll move to another sheet. All right. So I'll just put it up over here. Right. Right, so this is what I want to do. So I'll, I'm just giving you a hypothetical situation. And the hypothetical situation is more towards how can I automate data entry over here, right? So as we're moving towards data modeling and data, you know, capturing, how can we, end, uh, you know, automate data entry over here? For example, let's say, uh, probably I was thinking, can we just move on to a different sheet over here? Let me actually move on to a blank worksheet. And let me start with that. I'll, I'll move on to this blank worksheet and I'll, we can rename it later on while closing it. So I think the same thing I believe can be done over here, right? So I don't want to mix the two work in the same sheet. So I'll just put it up over here. Same problems. I'll just go to format auto with column. Hello. why it didn't work but no worries I just automate it what i want to do right now is that i want to automate for example let's say there is this is my let's say consolidated data now here in sheet 2 i'll make certain entries for example let's say i enter these things over here let me take this Control C and let me put it up over here. And I'll put it up in such a way that paste link and I'll go for, let's say paste special and I'll go for transfers. Let me do it like this. Okay. So this is what my team is entering on a regular basis. There's certain order IDs, there's certain order date, there's a ship date, there's a ship mode, or let me not take it as ship mode over here. Let me delete this. Okay, let me delete this order ID, order date, ship mode, customer ID, customer name, and segment. These are the seven things that my, you know, I'll just have to then in that case, remove it from here as well. I think order date and ship date is something that I've removed over here. So I'll just remove it from here as well. Right. And let's say I want to go for uh, adding category. Right. So this is my category. Just stay with me, guys. I'll explain what we are trying to do in two minutes. So there's a category, and I think I'll just put up category over here. All right. So consider this a form, right? Consider this a place where uh, right now, please do not worry about formatting because I really have made a mess of it over here. We can do that, but it's going to eat up certain time in this live session. So let me keep it like this. Okay. Now, so this is what we have, right? So what I did was what I asked my team to do was to enter data over here. Now, as they keep on entering data, for example, if they have an order ID, let's say the order ID, if I just take the example of an order ID over here, let's say they enter this particular data. Control C, right? This is the data which is entered over here, right? And order date, this is the order date, which is this. And I think ship mode, customer ID, customer name, segmented category. Ship mode, customer ID, customer name, segment. And I think there was no. And let's say category is. Mm -mm 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 
शिप डेट नहीं लिया है भाई सॉरी शिप मोड है आई एम सो सॉरी फॉर दिस आई जस्ट टेक दिस एंड पुट इट अप ओवर हियर एंड द कैटेगरी लेट्स से इज फर्नीचर right so i want data like this to be coming up i want data like this to be to get consolidated for example if someone puts in data over here if i just copy this and let me paste it up over here special transpose right and it, let's say somebody enters the data like this that data should automatically come over here and the data consolidation should begin is what i want that is someone enters this data manually over here enters let's say a submit button let's say there is a submit button over here okay there is a submit button over here he clicks the submit button the data entered over here gets recorded over here in another sheet and the sheet this particular sheet gets cleared over here right this is what i want majorly from a certain you know from people who are working on this now uh, let's see how can we do that how can we create that we can use this by using conditional formatting and certain macros that we haven't seen yet so macros is that particular part of excel which can be used to automate certain repetitive tasks over here now as somebody is going to enter this data over here and click on the submit button right they are going to repeat that particular task right now that repetitive task i don't want them to put up over here i don't want them to enter over here it might be for multiple reasons it might be for security reasons i want or this is a entirely different sheet and i'm taking data from two different sheets or i this sheet is hidden i don't want anybody's access to this particular sheet not even viewing access dekhna bhi nahi chahiye my team will enter data over here right so this is the form or i should say this is the data entry form that they are using over here this is the data entry form that they are using over here okay now once they enter the data click on submit button what should happen here in the consolidator the data should come up here simple as that right so let's see how can we do that okay the first thing that we need to do is to ensure that there are certain formatting thing that we can do first is let's say in this you know uh, in the cells what we can go for is we can go to conditional formatting and let's say go for manage rules we can go for new rule and you can say if the cell is blank right then format click on format fill it up with light red color so that i know that the cell is yet to be filled in we need to fill in certain values over here okay so that we know that we need to fill in certain values over here we can always give a you know data header over here we can always say that this is data entry right and we can increase the font size over here control b increase the we can go for a well selected format and we can probably select this entire part right so it, it looks slightly better right so if i just merge this up so it's a form basically somebody is entering data over here and the data entered as soon as the submit button is hit over here let me actually create a submit button let me merge this up right and let me call this or let me not merge it up let me keep only one cell right so i'll just keep this as submit right let me keep this as submit let me make this a submit button right now it's not acting as a button but we'll soon convert this into a submit button okay you can right click and assign something called as a macro over here anyways so the enter data entered over here and this is how something like this needs to be done let me create another part over here in which let's say the data entered here like for example if i enter the data i haven't entered any data over here so right now the sheets are colored dark orange but if i enter some data let's say i enter the state the sheet color changes to green over here right the original color that we had which is fine with us right or perhaps we can say that we can go for conditional formatting 
you can go for manage rules and 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 new rules and new rules format only cells that contain cell value which are no blanks and format them to be let's say white okay right now i don't want any kind of uh, for example if i enter something over here the term, cell turns out to be white what we can do is we can actually put up a tick over here here we can actually put up a tick and how can we do that there is a formula for doing that for example if i go for if the logical test being this is equal to blank then keep it blank otherwise inverted comma and inside this let me put a p now p in a certain uh, certain this thing certain font x is a tick right and that font please remember this is wing dings too if i click on this right right now there is not no entry over here that is why it's not showing anything but let's say if i go for order id something like this right there's a tick that is appearing over here can you see there's a tick which is getting appeared over here now if this there's a tick which is appearing we can still go for conditional formatting and we can say that let's go for manage rules and let me first copy the formula I'll just control C and put it up over here. I'll copy the formula. That way, whatever entry I do, the tick keeps on coming. Right? The tick keeps on coming. Right? And the number also changes. This way, I'm able to realize that, okay, this entry has been done. And I can now, once this is activated, I can say, okay, the submit button is done. We can activate the submit button now. Right? Oops, I'll just copy this again or probably drag it down, right? Let me delete this. I think the tick is gone now. Now, once we, we can still format it, okay? But uh, I'm not very sure that how much time should we spend on formatting. But still, we can go for conditional formatting. We can go for managing the rules over here. Let's click on new rules. Format only cells that contain, right? So. I can say that format cells only that contains blanks or rather you should say no blanks because if there's a tick, it's not a blank, right? So if I go for no blank, I format it and I say that fill it up with a green color in the fill, fill it up with a green color and font should be white. Let me try and see whether we can. Font should be regular or we can preview where is the coloring for font. Hello, 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 hello. hello. This is font style. This is size. This is font color. Okay, okay, border. Let's not do it. Okay. So background color, this is pattern color, this is pattern style, more color effects. Okay, let me keep it as it is. Let me try and see what happens over here if I go for okay. Okay, and if I enter something, for example, anything, right, it comes up something like this, which is still okay with me. Okay, I can live with that. Now, uh, the moment I do it, the moment I keep on doing it, the tick keeps on appearing over here, right? So I, I enter, for example, I take data from here. For the time being, I'll just order ID, order date, ship mode, right? So I'll just delete the ship mode from here. Customer ID, customer name, segment and category. Customer ID, customer name, segment and I wanted category column to be over here. Let me try and put it up over there. I think you can just control X. And if I'm lucky enough, I'll just put it up over here in some cut cells. And now we can actually paste some values over here. Right. So I want this to come. Let's say control C. Right. And let me delete this. That's what I said. Delete this piece right and now i'll move on to this and I'll insert i'll go for mm -hmm. interesting there's no control c but i'll just go for control c 
right click paste special i'll go for insert option over here go for paste special go for transpose as values and click on okay right so i the moment i put in the header the color of the the color of the cells have changed and the ticks have come up right the ticks have come up over here okay now what we need to do is to activate a submit button over here using that particular submit button what happens is let me copy this entire data first of all over here control c let me put it up over here and it's slightly embarrassing i think this happening multiple times now i'll just delete this right and it copied the formatting as well so what i'll do is i'll we don't need the you know we don't need the rules over there we can keep it whatever we want to keep okay so if i just uh, double click this let me although i can select this and give it a proper row height which can be done from here now let's say go for 10 right it's too less go for 15. Fair enough. right so this is what we want to do now this is equal to what is entered over here right so this is equal to what is entered over here we can drag it down to category and let's say let's go for a total right let's go for a total okay and the total is nothing but equal to count a which is just giving the count of the total entries which are done now what am i doing try and understand what am i doing over here now what am i doing is i'm ensuring all the seven entries are done for example if these three entries are not done then it's not going to give me hello 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 it should not come out to be seven okay okay it should not come out to be seven that is that's one thing that we need to look into uh, 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 uh. if i go for count let me go for something else c7 this is equal to c8 this is equal to c9 and this is nothing but equal to count let me go for another formula let's say count blank and if i go for count blank it will come out to be equal to still come out to be same the idea would be that i want to ensure that i want to ensure that all the entries have been done over here all the entries are done and then we look into this stuff okay so let me redo it let me redo it i think redoing it at times is not a bad option i'll just remove the colors and i'll say that please don't go for any fill i just go for equal to equal to this right so this and uh, this is equal to this i don't know why but i think i should manually do it right so this is equal to second class this one this one is equal to segment is equal to category right now this is equal to count and if i go for count uh, let's say let me go for count over here let me start with the first count over here i think count is a function which is counting the number of numerical values over here and we can see that right now it's counting five which is i3 to i9 right and if i go for count a it's counting seven okay 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 probably we can then do it like this that if this is equal to blank let me go for a formula then keep this blank otherwise keep this whatever is entered over here okay let me try this that way i think this comes out to be blank very very interestingly it's still coming out to be seven Okay. Uh, 
okay now it's counting the number of you know numeric entries over here now if i go for count a still coming out to be seven this is extremely extremely interesting anyways let's keep it as it is and move on okay now what i wanted actually was that once all the entries are done the submit button over here can get activated right so i think that is one thing that i wanted right but uh, that's fine what we can do now is we can actually say that okay when this is equal to 7 right we we'll go for this go for conditional formatting manage rules over here let's go for new rule and i go for use a formula to determine which cells to format let me use this and the formula is simple that if this is equal to 7 right then okay right and then i say hello i forgot to give the rule over here If I go for this, let me edit rule and then format, and format it to let's say a dark blue color over here. Okay, I go for okay and I go for okay, right? So let me do one thing. Let me take it up over here. Let me control C and or other I say control X, put it up over here, and then control C. And inside the paste option, there is something called as a linked picture. Click on this. right and now that way i think this image gets converted into a picture and now i can put it anywhere so let me put it put the button over here okay click outside this becomes a button now we can format it as well right now we can click on this particular portion over here and this actually is a picture right and we can format the picture over here so let me use it like this so idea is whenever this comes out to be 7 you the format this should basically we can submit it up over here okay now there is a small error which is coming up which says that i3 to i9 should come out to be equal to you know uh 3 why because there are only three entries done over here what i want is in this particular part what i want is whatever being the number of entries done over here should be counted Now, but i think it is right now counting the formulas as well right is right now counting the formulas as well so let me see how can i change this so i'll just click on this click on this enter if i just drag this up and it still is giving me this or probably i can just go for another adjustment over here if i say if this is equal to blank then go for zero i'll assign zero when you otherwise assign a one i can use a if formula over here and this becomes one right and then we can go for right so if i this is equal to this if i drag it up all of them will come out to be equal to one right now because the values are there so if i use the formula is equal to if this is equal to blank then keep this blank as well otherwise keep this equal to whatever is entered over here and i close it up and once i close it up and drag it down i should come up as this thing now i can say that this is nothing but equal to sum of these numbers so if count is not working the new jugad should work and it does work now the moment you can see that there is a 3 over here see understand in the conditional formatting what we have done with this particular button is that the moment you look at the rules it says the rule clearly says oops i think i have not selected that yeah this button the rule or i can say this button the rule clearly says that unless this is equal to 7 unless this is equal to 7 which which is equal to 7 this is equal to 
the conditional formatting will not apply. So we can see you'll not be able to click the submit button. The user will not be able to click the submit button. The moment we keep on putting the values over here, for example, there is a customer ID. So if I want to put in the customer ID, let's say, let me put up these values over here. Okay. So if I just put up customer ID and rest of the pay values over here, let's do it in the transpose manner. Now this comes out to be seven. I don't know how is it auto formatting. And the value comes out to be equal to one and this comes out to be submit and the button got activated. Now the person can submit the button over here. Okay. Although I have inputted the data in the wrong place, so I'll just put it up over here. And I'll go for pay special, pay special, hello, mistakes. Right, so I'll just do this. Oops, sorry, wrong selection. I'll do it again. Click on this, pay special, transpose, okay. Now all the data is submitted. The data is submitted. The total comes out to be seven. The button got activated. The button got activated. Now the button is what we need to do is to assign this particular certain button something called as a macro okay now understand that till seven is not coming up the user will not be able to click on the submit button the macro will not work right we'll move to what my macro is don't worry about that but for example if i remove this furniture from here if i delete this furniture from here we can see that the total is six and as per the conditional formatting of these buttons these buttons are majorly working only when the macro is going to work. It's going to active only when, when the number over here is seven. And unless I enter furniture or something else, right? Unless I enter furniture or something else, the button will not get activated. Now the button is active. We can right click to this button and something called as assign macro. Once I click on this, I find that there is no macro right now. They are to be assigned to. Now, what is a macro? We need to understand what is a macro. Macro is nothing but a, I should uh, say, this is a very nice version that has been used for going for tasks which are, you know, repetitive tasks. Macro is nothing but it's a record of the automated task that you're doing. So macro in Excel is going to record what you're doing. For example, I say that I want to, you know, uh, combine this along with any, any other sheet over here, right? For example, there are multiple repetitive tasks. So I, I'm taking this row, for example, I'm taking this row and putting it up over here. And then I'm taking this row, copying this row and putting this up over here. Now, obviously, this all are nothing but what? These are nothing but repetitive tasks. If I go for this thing, it's just a very simple example of this, right? But the point is, if something like this has to be done, macros is there for us. It records the steps of the task that you're doing. And once you execute the macro, the macro is going to repeat that task for you. You don't have to do it again, right? So let's see how that can be done on Excel. Now we can go to view and we can go to macros and we can click on macros and start clicking on this particular part, which is called as record macro. Now, once we click on record macro, give it a name. Let's say I go for merge or I should say consolidate data. Consolidate data. I said consolidate data. We can give a shortcut if you need to, but I, I don't feel the need of doing it. And you can describe what this macro is doing. I think it's always good to describe it because if there's another user who comes across and uses this particular sheet, he or she will have a very fair idea of it. Now, the moment I click on OK button, over here, whatever this macro does is it's going to it's going to record whatever happens on the screen till you ask it to stop, till you stop it. Okay. Now, once that recording is there, now that memory of, okay, once after the user clicked, okay, these are the actions that he performed. That record is saved somewhere. And whenever you give a command to Excel that execute that macro again, execute that macro again, Excel is going to run that macro and it's going to do the repeated task over there. And this is where, you know, we can actually keep on consolidating the data over here.
let me start with clicking on OK. OK, I'll click on OK. And now the macro has started. What I'll do is I'll select this very carefully, go for Control C. I go to Consolidate Data and I click on Order ID. I right click over here. I go to Paste Spatial. And I say that paste this as value. I don't want any kind of formatting. And then paste is as transpose and click on OK. Come back to data entry. Delete all these because you want the form to be fresh over here. OK. So delete all this. Click on this. And now the macros task is done. And now we can go to view and click on this and say stop recording. So the macro is done now. The macro has been recorded. Okay, the task has been recorded. Now what we can do is, so what has happened over here is macro has just recorded that particular part of the task, which needs to be automated after clicking the submit. So what do you want after you click the submit? Once you click the submit button, you want the data that is entered over here to enter here automatically. Okay, and then this particular part to clear up for the next entry because the team, the person who is actually entering the data over here will be putting in multiple data sets over there, multiple data items over there. For example, if, a, if he has put in order ID, order date, ship mode, for example, order ID is let's say 2153 and let's say order date is 18, 11, 2023, right? And then ship mode is standard, okay, sorry standard and customer id is 1105 let's say customer name is Saurabh. segment is you say segment is what were the segments man <laughs> i can just have a so segments for consumer or home office let me go for home office right this is home office and category is my let's say furniture right so this is what i the moment i do it the the submit button got activated over here as you can see now what i need to do is click on the submit button right click on the submit button and assign a macro and there's a macro over here which is consolidate data and i click on this macro click on okay the button gets assigned the data over here right now let me remove this. And the moment I click on this, right, the moment I click on this, okay, I think the, yeah, the moment I click on this, the entry got over here. The same entry was done over here, right? And the next submit button is active now because now I can enter anything over here. For example, I can go for 15145. Let's say order date is, let's say, 18 to 2024. We can go for different things over here, whatever we enter. Right. And now once I click on submit button, the same data gets consolidated over here, right over here. Right. And the data consolidation keeps on going forward, right? That's the point. This is the case over here. Right. So whenever you want only one row, I mean, no, there are certain other rows over here. I can just select this and say that, okay, here, what we want is we can probably go to insert, click on table, call it a table, and this is your table. Right. This is where you want that data entry to come up. Right. You can keep on entering the data, and the, and the data will get entered over here in the consolidate format. Right. Now, just change it. Right. So this is how we can, you know, automate the data. Entry, right. This is where imagine a scenario in which there are seven people. They're basically let's say telecallers talking to potential customers, gathering certain information. And that information has to be they're having their own sheets over here. They're having their own seven different sheets. And those seven different sheets, what they're doing is they're doing their part of the data entry. And the data entry automatically gets consolidated using a macro over here in another sheet. That is something that we can probably go for. Okay. So this is what macros can do. 
right so these are certain shortcuts which i wanted to discuss guys i think this is uh one part i think in uh yeah data consolidation is done i think data appending we can go forward to as well or probably in order to go for data appending i need to create another set of let's say four sheets over here the data that i'm looking forward to was perhaps just a minute guys what i'll do is I'll just use this sheet, right? And there's certain data points over here. I'll just take those data points and put it up over here. All right, so I'll just use. Now we are seeing how can we how can we merge two or more excel sheets let's see how can we merge two or more excel sheets over here let me just control v okay and i think this is my q1 let's say this is the data of quarter one of sales of certain products over here of certain enterprise abc enterprise i think i got this data on a demo since from a certain place let me go for Q2. I'll take the data for Q2. Let me put it up over here in the next sheet, which is my Q2. All right. I'll open up two more sheets over here. And this is my Q3. I'll take this up. And I'll similarly post data for Q4. So this is the data unfortunately i won't be able to show on the screen guys so apologies for that right so this is what we have this is q2 this is q3 this is my q4 right now what i want is i want one sheet to represent the entire data i don't want to copy paste it i do not want to copy paste it right now this is q1 but what if the data is of a monthly level then you know it can't be expected from me to copy the data for monthly level plus copying the data will just append the data that is it can just put the data one below the other one it won't be able to sum up the data for example let me keep it to let's say three date numbers over here 367 what i want is i want to append this particular data okay let's see how can we do that very simple let's say let me call it uh appended data or i should say consolidation of data right now uh, what i need to do is to click on a certain cell and simply move on to data and i think as we can see there's a very simple sign over here which says in data tools we'll have to move on to something called as consolidation or consolidate data click on this and now what we need to do is you know how we, how do you want to consolidate the data that is for example this is coffee candy chocolate sugar milk powder are the products of the company these are sales done by those products over here fair enough again the same thing in the same same product it's just that the quarters are different it's quarter two and now this is quarter three similarly we have quarter four all right now what i want is it should sum it up that is, it should give me the sum of coffee in Q4, Q3, Q2, and Q1. Obviously, I can apply a sum formula over here as well. But for example, if I can just say that is equal to sum, right? I go to this, sum this up. And then control, or probably I can just click on Q3 and say that sum this up. Q2, sum this up. And so on like this, right? We can do that. And the sum can be obtained over here. Probably, I think I need to work on it, right? Or it can be, you know, Q4, this, plus this, and so on like this. So this is how we used to work years ago, right? When we were actually introduced to it. 
right but now i think this won't be the case over here what we can go for is we can just go for a lot of operations have been done you can click on this consolidation you can see that what do you what is it that you want with the numbers over here you want it to sum it up you want to count it up you want to average it out max it out minimum product ka. Yeah, you want to multiply these numbers you can count these numbers you can go for anything there are certain statistical uh, numbers over here as well standard deviation variance various p all that kind of stuff can be done let me stick to some and i have to give a reference over here let me take the reference okay and i'll take the reference and i'll go for q1 and I'll say that let's take the entire row over here this is my reference okay i click on this the reference is sorted i'll say add this i'll move on to q2 can you just see the reference is automatically selected in Q2? The reference is automatically selected in Q2. Just what I think there is. There seems to be a problem in copying the data. Is it? Is it fruit juice? Is 11th over here? The fruit juice seems to be 12th over here. Here is the product 12, 12, 12, 12. All right. No worries. I'll do it again. So I'll go to consolidation, consolidate the sheet over here, sum, click on this, and I go to Q1, and I say that let's keep product Jan, Feb, March till fruit juice. I want to keep this much, right? Let's, I think this is already added, right? This is already added. So I'll go for Q2, and in Q2, the same range is there. But very interestingly, the range is coming out to be including the total. This is brilliant. Product. Oh, my bad. I think I just did one thing. I think some time ago, I think chocolate powder is not there with this. So I'll just remove this. Come back and consolidate again. I'll just delete this. Finally, finally, we're doing it. We'll go to Q1. We'll take this product and take this. Click on OK. Click on Add. Then if we click on Q2, the reference automatically selects the same area. For Q2 sheet, we just had to click on Add. Once you click on Q3 tab over here, the reference selects the same area again. What you need to do is to add similarly for Q4, right? Just add it up. And now you can, there are three options over here. One is top row, left column, and create links to source sheet. You click on top row, indicating that you want the top row to be taken. Into. Then you can click on left column because I want the left column which contains product. And I create links to source data. I want to do that as well because it basically links to these are the source data and it creates the links to that, right? So if I click on OK, something like this comes up. Now, this is giving me the sum of, I can just do one thing, I can merge this one up. Now, this is giving me some of the sales of all the products, right? It's giving me the sum of the sales of all the products. Oops, 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 let's let's only format these. Okay, so it's giving me some or sales of all the products from Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June. These are the months over here, and this is the these are nothing but the products over here. Okay, we can click on plus sign and we can always say that okay, what would be the you know, I can just click on candy and we can see what happens with coffee. Sorry, can click on coffee. We can just study each and every product over here. For example, for candy, these are the sales in Jan, Feb, March. These are the sales in April, May, and June. Similarly, for the next three months and the last three months over here. Right? And we can minimize this. This is how we can consolidate data from multiple tabs into the same tab, into one single tab over here. Right? This is particularly used when, again, the data entries are there in different uh, columns. The data entered are there in multiple columns or multiple tabs over here. But I want to show them as a manager, I want to show them in one particular sheet. 
For example, this is what I can show, right? This is the data which I'll be able to show to my management. This is the sales that is being done. I cannot keep on moving between quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three and quarter four, right? It has to be something like this. It has to be done at this particular point, right? Like this. Cool. So this is called as data consolidation. There are plenty of things that we can do when it comes to data as well, right? So I think in today's agenda, what I wanted to discuss was something called as data modeling. So I'll just go for this as, let me call this, and let me first of all put this in desktop. My local system, I'll call this, you know, consolidation because I think mostly in this sheet we have done data consolidation. Consolidation and let's call it today's date 29. Okay. Let's close this one now. Right. Now, once we do this, I think there's another thing that I wanted to share with you guys. I'll just do that, and that is called as data modeling. Okay. I'll just close the sheet as well. Right. So, yeah, I'll just click on this file option. Let me see whether I have the file open up with us. Otherwise, we'll have to browse it. Let's open. Click on browse. And I want to take up certain sort of data sets. For example, let me take Adventure Works database over here. So I think this is the last agenda that I wanted to discuss today. I'll just open this particular sheet. Right. And in this particular sheet, there are five tables. I think in the very first class, we have taken care of this. In the very first class, we have looked at this particular sheet. It consists of sales as the major table over here. What I really wanted to show in this one is basically to go for data modeling. How can we go for data modeling? Okay. So uh, for that, you need to have a version which is 2020 and above in Excel. If that is not the case, then probably you'll struggle with this. What you need to do is to go to Power Pivot, right? And click on Add to Data Model. What you need to do is to add to data model all the sheets that we're talking about. So this gets added to the data model okay sales get added to the data model once you go to calendar over here again right and then we can add to the data model again over here. the calendar also as you can see there's a data model that i'm working upon there's a sales data model this is the entire data over here and there's a calendar data which has come up let me click on customer and i can also add it to the data model once I add it to the data model, there's another tab which will get created, which is for customer. This is a data model that we are creating, right? You can see the entire customer details will be over here. What to do with it? We'll come to that. Don't worry. So I think calendar customer sales has been added. What we can, what we need to do now is to let me minimize this. System got hung up. Okay. We'll have to go for product. I'll go for product and I'll go to add to data model again. So the product also got to add it to the data model and the same thing with territory, add to the data models. So now this are the five sheets that I want to go for data modeling. What do we mean by data modeling? By data modeling, we are basically connecting the table, right? In the next class on Monday, once we move on to pivot tables, we can actually now see what is the advantage of data modeling for us, right? So now we can go for diagram view. We can click on the diagram view and here we can see the diagram view. The diagram view, it say it basically gives me the gist of all the tables over here, right? It is giving me the gist of all the tables, what these tables are. There are five tables. Right, we need not to actually have this much dimension. And I think if you guys are there, uh, were there in the first class, we have discussed that the the best, or I should say, the parent table over here in this entire setup was sales, because sales was actually giving information about the product, as well as customer, as well as where uh, the territory or the location where the product is sold and which product was sold. So sales comes out to be the sales table, which is my 
entire transaction history of what the company is sold is given over here. So what I'll do is I'll put try and put sales towards the center. Right. And I'm doing data modeling these five tables. What do you mean by data modeling? By data modeling, I mean that we are trying to, you know, uh, connect these tables over here. Right now, if I want to do some kind of analysis between, let's say, you know, uh, sales between, let's say, uh, what is the, if I look at sales territory, yeah. If I had to go for uh, analysis between region and sales amount, without connecting these two tables, I'll not be able to do that because the two tables are not connected. Right now, I can do analysis of any two variables which are present in one single table unless I join them up. Now, this is a very classical example of joining the two tables over here. Right. So let's let's take the territories over here. Now, sales territory key is the is that particular variable which is common between the two. So I can just take it up, drag it, and oops, it hung up. Sorry. Okay. Uh, create relationship. And I want to create a relationship which is sales strategy key. And I want to do it with sales. Okay. And there's a sales territory key. We can see that this is sales strategy key. If I click on OK, the relationship is getting created. The relationship between territories table and sales table got created. Right. It says that there's a sales territory key and there's a sales territory key over here. If I click on this line, it indicates the two quantities which are being connected over here. OK. Now, similarly, I can say that, OK, let me connect this table. Right. Right click over here. Create relationship. And I want to create the relationship of sales table with, let's say, another table, which is called as customer. And it quickly identified customer key as the common key over here, common column. So what I can do is I can click on OK. And now there's a relationship which got created between customer and sales table. Similarly, for product table, I can right click, click create a relationship and relationship of this table with sales table. It says that, OK, there is a category. Hello. Very interesting because there is a product key over here and there is a product key over here. <coughs> Excuse me. So based on this particular parameter, I want to join these two tables. So I'll click on OK. And now these two tables are also connected. Now calendar being uh, the one I think what I need to do over here is to connect order date with the date in the calendar because in calendar we can see that a lot of this you know a lot of uh, description about the date was given whether it's a weekday which day of the week is it or you know or which quarter does it fall into which month does it fall into so it gives you detailed description of the date okay now the date and which date shall I con connect this particular date of calendar to in case of sales table, now obviously that has to be order date because order date is the date in which the sales has happened. It's more appropriate and more logical that I connect the date with the order date over here. So I just click on this particular table, right click, click on create relationship. And I say that this is a calendar table. I want to connect it with the sales table. It says that there's a date and there's a customer key. There's no way I'm joining date and customer key. There's no, it doesn't make sense. But I'll say that date can be joined with order date. I clicked on date and order date over here. I clicked on OK. And the relationship got selected. The relationship got took place over here. This is called as data modeling. You'll be able to see it in other Microsoft tools like Power BI as well, where it's slightly easier to do data modeling. But again, simple that we are able to create it up over here. Okay. Now what we need to do is to create and save this, right? Now, once let's say what happens with the advantage of this is once we click on a new sheet over here, click on home or click on insert and click on pivot table. Not only we can actually draw a pivot table from a table or range, we can also draw it from a data model. Now, the advantage of drawing it on the data model is that 
all the columns of all the tables are getting accounted over here right so we can see these are all tables calendar guys these are all tables calendar customer product sales strategies and now these are all connected tables now these connected tables i can take a variable from customer i can take a variable from customer right let's say education and put it on let's say rows and i take a variable from sales which is sales amount so i can see that this what is the sum of sales amount or we can say that okay let's let's right click over here show values as percentage of grand totals we can see that okay bachelors are contributing to highest to my sales as compared to you know high school graduate degree partial college or partial high school this is one inference i can draw so this is what we're going to do i think we are going to enter into pivot table or probably we'll move on to power pivot and power query in the next session on monday but before that i think uh, I, it's a couple of times that we have taken the reference of pivot tables so i think uh, we need to move on to pivot tables very quickly and we will right so we'll move on to pivot tables because ultimately pivot tables are the highest advantage that excel sheet can offer apart from other you know big advantages that it has so you can easily summarize the data using pivot table All right so let's see that in the upcoming classes in the upcoming classes we'll look into what is left now is that we'll see how uh, are we going to what are pivot tables we'll look into power query editor as well we'll look into pivot tables as well we'll look into how can we create dashboards using certain you know uh, data in excel All right so yeah i think this is where we uh, move towards the closure of the agenda of this particular class right so i think quant one hour 45 minutes is something that i prefer keeping the class to that's what we have done today right so i'm going to wait for another couple of minutes and if there's a doubt you guys can feel free i think i mean uh, there are people from multiple domains over here youtube linkedin and everything if you have any doubt you can please put it on the chat box or we can call it a day right i'll just delete the sheet because i think i should not move on to pivot table quickly i'll just have the sheets as resources i think i already have but i'll just do it again sample super store save this right all right so i'll just put this in the resources so that you guys can have it So yes guys feel free to put anything on the chat box if you have any doubts please feel free to put this in the chat box i'll be more than happy to take care of that Sample super stores that file which I want to put it up over here. This is the major file that we worked on today. All right. Interesting. All right. Uh, great, guys. I think this is where we can probably uh, call it a day. Thank you very much for joining this session. And yeah, let's let's uh, meet on Monday for further updates on what we can do with X. Okay. See you guys. Bye bye.
Have a nice weekend, all of you.